Tune Richard McCormick, great to have you. Richard, uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks. Good to be great. Uh, great to be with you today. And I remember, too, I'm an ER doc, so watching this uh, mental unhealth unfold in front of us is is eye-popping. It's, uh, I'm sure, very alarming to the Democrats to watch their candidate need to be escorted everywhere he goes for fear he might fall down or say something abstract or absolutely insane. Yeah, these numbers here, the CNN poll conducted uh, shows Trump ahead by six points. 56 percent of Democrats will put this up, and even Democrat-leaning registered voters, Congressman, say that they will do better without the party. And right now, we have our very first uh, Democrat calling for him to step down. But these are the numbers right here. But the uh, first Democrat calling for him to step down, it it's pretty big and hard to dismiss this now. He's uh, represented Austin, Texas. Uh, since 1995, and you know, and now he's saying his name is uh, Dodgett, and he's saying Lloyd Dodgett is saying, having uh, devoted his life to public service, that President Biden has achieved much for our country and at home. But stepping up to a lead a nation in crisis, he writes, President Biden helped rebuild our country. But he goes on to say, basically, that I am hopeful of the painful and difficult decision he makes to withdraw. Uh, do you think President Biden is actually going to withdraw now that we see a mounting pressure, including from those like this uh, recent uh, comment I just read to you here and some within the inner circle and those big donors? Well, you want to talk about the inner circle, the people who are on his staff have nothing to gain by him stepping down. That's their bread and butter. That's how they subsist. I mean, if, if he steps down, they don't have a job. If you talk about the, the absolute inner circle, his wife is no longer first lady. Uh, she wants him to be president for her sake. Uh, if you talk about the biggest donors who have already contributed and got him into house, uh, if he start, if he resigns or, or steps down, they have to start over in their donating. So I don't think it's as easy and straightforward. Plus, if he doesn't want to, he doesn't have to. It's kind of like being king. You can tell the king he's crazy, but be careful of that. Uh, you can tell the king he has no clothes on, but be careful with that. Uh, he doesn't have to stand up. There's no law that says he has to, unless, of course, you invoke the 25th or some other way. Uh, you'd have to basically force him out if he doesn't want to do that. And convincing a guy who's senile, and he is senile, let's face it, a guy who has to be guided around by the arm, to figure out how to get off stage, a guy who can't put three sentences together during a debate, who can't keep his train of thought. He's the kind of guy you'd put in memory care. If I was a doctor, I'd be like, look, mm. either has, somebody has to be around him 24 hours a day or he has to be in memory care because he would be dangerous to himself. Right. But we're also hearing, you know, that the staff is openly, you know, criticizing him, those reports before they wouldn't do that. So now it's become sort of, as you say, at a crisis point where maybe they can't convince him. Uh, but a lot of the chatter and there was this big call with governors yesterday and they're saying he's not taking calls that he needs to either quit or get out there and campaign more aggressively. I mean, we saw him come out last night, for example. Uh, we're going to see him actually any moment. We may uh, break away to listen to his comments where he's talking about extreme weather with uh, D.C. Mayor uh, Mar Mario Bowser. I mean, if he goes out even more, what's the risk there? And is it a risk at all, or is it just clarity for American people who have been misled by the Democratic Party and by some of the media in uh, the big media? Well, a huge risk for them, because imagine having to sell something, whether it be Ukraine or climate change, with a guy who cannot even function cognitively. Uh, when you talk about climate change, the religion has become, and, and I highly recommend everybody read a book called Unsettled about the real science of climate change and, and what it's really attributed to. I, I don't think you have a good salesman there. He is not a good person to sell any ideas for the Democratic Party, and their ideas are bad to begin with. Obviously, yesterday, too, the Supreme Court ruling on immunity, official acts by president, complete and absolute immunity, big ramifications when it comes to Jack Smith, but also the case down in Georgia with Fonnie Willis is unraveling as well. Uh, so when you look at where we were uh, maybe just a few short months ago, Bragg celebrating a victory here. Now he's saying they may even delay the this, this sentencing. Um, there was concern that Juan Marchand might want to try to jail Trump before the RNC convention. But now it looks like, Congressman, that the wind is truly at Donald Trump's back here. Oh, for sure. I mean, the interesting thing about this court case, and I, I'm a doctor, not a lawyer, uh, full disclosure, is that it does kick it back down to the local, the district courts, to determine if it's in his mm -hmm. capacity or not. So it doesn't let him totally out the hook. And it does still leave some discretion whether it is in his official capacity. But it definitely did puts the ball back in Trump's uh, court. So actually, it's very much more difficult to uh, to convict him. 
Well, that's Donald Trump's side. And again, just, you know, putting a finer point on it. If Democrats are pressuring now and even looking for options of a different ticket with Kamala and someone else, more Bashir, um, it does seem like there is panic on their side. I mean, it is up to Joe Biden, but do you think the calls will just become so loud um, if he's not going to be answering, if there is a way that um, someone at some point says this just not, there's no path for you here, there's no, there's no confidence. It sounds like from reports we're getting that Capitol Hill is basically about to, you know, explode, that, you know, Hakeem Jeffries, who might be hearing from folks from, you know, the top there, a Democratic leadership congressman, are you hearing any talk like that? I don't know that it's going to come from leadership, but you're seeing this groundswell of people in the Democratic Party who are literally panicking and know that they cannot win with Biden at the top of the ticket. He's their worst chance. When, you, when you're when you starting to consider Kamala Harris as your alternative, you're in trouble. That's for sure. Remember, she only got about 6 percent in the primary, and they're talking about her as a viable alternative to Biden. That tells you what desperation they're in right now. Yeah, it sure does. And again, first Democrat calling on Biden to step aside out of Austin there. Um, we think there could be more calls like that. Congressman Richard McCormick, a pleasure to have you. Thank you for the candid conversation. As always, good to see you. Always a pleasure. Have a great fourth. Thank you so much, sir.